Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Russia. So we are balancing everything on a fine point, trying to keep war away. We still have just ages left in this treaty. Is that seven years? So I don't think we'll, we'll I'm pretty sure we're not going to make it that far. The interesting thing about these treaties is, I mean, we're, we're going to try to hold off on war and keep this treaty for as long as possible because this is where we have our power spike coming from. We want to try to stall out war with um, anybody, but especially with the frogs. It looks like that's where it's headed. Um, because that's going to give our battle cruisers a chance to actually come into effect, and then if we can get the destroyers on top of that, the ideal would be to hit that power spike right at the beginning of a war, and then use the budget. We should have a budget surplus right around that time, and be ready to build our new dreadnought the moment our war is started, because then we'll be right at the head of the technology. Um, because nobody, not everyone else will have necessarily planned for the end of hostilities or the end of the treaty. They might not have reserved enough budget. So that's the, I mean, that's all the idea. I'm not sure how it'll work out. Looks like we can resume one of these guys, though. Okay, good. So, moving on. Oh. I need room for my tea. Okay, good. So we've completed some of our reconstruction. And we're, ooh, boy. So which ones are these? The Vesta. Yes, indeed. Even our old Bernie classes. Like, what are these guys even still doing in service? <laughs> 29 knots. I mean, that means that they're about the same speed as their battle cruisers, which are coming out. <laughs> which is very amusing. Yeah, okay, well, uh, this is not going to cost pretty much anything to redo. There's just nothing we can do. This is just a silly ship. How much do these things cost? 10,000? Yeah, I guess they're worth just redoing, just putting more paint back on them. Uh, I don't think we can get... No, I'm certain we cannot get that, so. Yeah, we'll just uh, leave them exactly the way they are. This will be their one retrofit. I'm pretty sure as soon as we can get a new destroyer, we will just, these will be sacrificed. There's no reason why they should be in our Navy still, just that I've forgotten to build destroyers. I mean, now we're gonna try to build destroyers because we uh, are anticipating yeah, that doesn't matter. That's fine. Um, the need for them, we really should. We obviously know we need destroyers at this point. We're just waiting on the budget. Okay, that's a good start. And our first battle cruiser, treaty battle cruiser though it is, has entered. This one is actually cool enough that I I think. Let's generate a picture for this guy. Could be kind of interesting. So this is a battle cruiser going 29 knots. I feel like that should get it straight, straight. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. That looks really cool, huh? Now let's just add some portholes. Maybe that's a little bit too big, but is there something else we can choose? You know what, the, maybe the big one is, can I get it going the other direction? Yeah, I think this might be like in the background. and kind of lower it. Oh, actually I should undo that because our superstructure would be over here. So we just put it right behind this guy. Ah, oh, okay, that's cool, that looks fine. Um, there's some kind of fixture up here, so what if we can just gray out the deck here? Yeah, it looks fine. Very cool. There it is. <laughs> you can tell I don't have a lot of experience with this stuff. Probably we'll put this thing right here. Because that looks like where our command deck is, more or less. Very good. It doesn't make sense. This is not how the ship would 
that, but who cares, right? Okay, good, so we will use an exit, and there she is, the Kinberg Battlecruiser. So I'm really happy with that one, which I've said num a number of times already. It looks like we have, with the addition of that one, we can unhalt this one. So France have crushed the rebels. Um, let's send a diplomatic note. We have such low tensions with the United States, it should not matter. So now we're just waiting for the budget for these destroyers. Aha, the MAL-39 is done. That's going to help. Um, so there's already a disarmament treaty. Oh my gosh, so we can't force war with France. Let's do this middle one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, that's just fine with me, to be honest. I keep wondering what we're going to do about these Vesta classes. I guess we just absolutely have to retrofit them once more. Because I'm not going to be able to get a replacement for them by the next war, even though they are just so terrible. They are... I, you know what? They still have enough armor. Okay, but they're also in protected armor configuration. I shouldn't forget about that. My Rubens, I'm pretty sure, are not, right? Okay, first of all, we can get director firing on these guys. I Yeah, I think I'm actually going to upgrade this Ruben then. Plus, they are at 26, right? Yeah, they need to be upgraded. Okay, so this is <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, okay. I think we'll even drop this down to 175 to give them a little bit extra weight. I'm not... I doubt we'll ever need the full 175, so... Uh, my mentality with this is our, always that, hey, if you're increasing the fire control, you should be sinking ships faster with uh, less ammo wasted. So you shouldn't need as much as many rounds per gun. So let's go ahead and do this. I know I said I was going to be upgrading my Vesta, but it turns out we decided to get the Reuben instead. But it's a higher priority because this Vesta is basically useless. I think we might just scrap her. And if we're gonna scrap her ever, let's just scrap her now. I, I think I'm I think I'm gonna do this. We won't have any ships in Northeast Asia though. We'll get a few flora classes sent over first. Let's get three. Okay, let's get four. Let's get these guys all to move over to Northeast Asia. Okay, I thought I had four go there. Oh, the Apricnic is not is already not available. <laughs> you can see I'm trying to keep like the Sabo, the Tomislav. I'm trying to keep these guys in Northern Europe where I expect more of the action will be. I think three of those ships will be sufficient because we still have three battleships over there. Um, let's see. Let me think. What is our tonnage requirement over there? So we are satisfying it by over a hundred thousand. And how many Vesta classes do we have? These are at six thousand apiece, sixty-six thousand. So, yep, we're gonna do it. We're just gonna scrap all of these guys. One, we have, we do have uh, the floor class to kind of compensate, but two, we also certainly have the, uh, the class I just started rebuilding. Yeah, the Rubin class. The Rubin class is going to be sufficient. I don't really want to build more of those because they don't have any surface mounted torpedoes, which I would want for my next light cruiser. But our next step is destroyers anyways. And this, hey, you know what, this did free up a bit of budget. I wish I had done that a while ago, in fact. Okay, we are increasing our ASW. I do like that because, how many, wait, how many minesweepers do we have now? 25, that's probably enough. Why is everybody's crew quality only fair? 
I know at least some of these ships did not just get built. It is curious. I wonder what explains why crew quality is anything. But, oh well. I guess it's not for me to know. Austria-Hungary. Well... I think we'll do this one because this will hopefully decrease tensions with France and hopefully not impact our budget 380. Torpedoes, this were good things. And 380. Wow, that was perfect. Because I don't really care. Okay, well, it didn't help our tension with France. But at least it didn't really matter. I didn't really matter what we do with Austria Hungary. I don't want to go to war with Austria Hungary. I'd avoid that even more than I would avoid going to war with France. Right now, if we went to war with France, we should just dominate them because with Great Britain as our ally, there's just no way France is going to hold even their home sea zone. But I'm just interested in keeping this treaty along for a long time until I have the budget for my next big dreadnought. The perfect timing for everything would be right when I have my new budget for like another dreadnought, that would be exactly the moment that the treaty would end. All right, do we have enough for the destroyers now? They're not gonna cost too much. I mean, it's got it's like now or never, right? If we're not gonna, if, we're, if we aren't gonna do it now, when will we? And these guys are about a year away, so yes, this is exactly, I think, the time when we design our new destroyer. So we have 1,500 tons available, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, the Bravi. That sounds brave. Obviously, we're going to try to get as fast as possible. Engine priority is going to be speed. OK, so none of this matters. And now the torpedoes that they fire is everything for these ships. I don't even think we need this turret. I'm happy with even just two four inch guns. That's not the best. Certainly it's not the best. I understand that. But this is a torpedo boat and it only needs enough guns to basically just thwart or ward off enemy destroyers. You, you know, you can do two things with your destroyers, I think. I don't really think you... Well, alright, now that I think about it for half a second more, I guess there's three roles that your destroyer can fill. It can be really fast, it can defend itself well against other destroyers, or it can be a good torpedo boat. And you can only choose two of the three. So I want full speed and I want torpedoes, which means I'm just going to have to sacrifice its ability to take down destroyers um, mano a mano. Now um, I'm going to clear these mounts. I do want the triple mount, but Let's go with PRW. How does that look? Looks good to me. Everything's okay. So we have nine torpedoes on this, which I've always found is a, a decent number. So we actually have enough weight remaining. This will probably be this will probably be offset by the extra rounds that we're gonna have to add. But no, actually not bad at all. So this, thing's will be, this thing will be 5 tons underweight as is. We can't get any more than 35. So this is a really good ship. I mean, considering it's only 1918, we have our end game destroyer are already ready to go. Yeah, I don't see any better way of improving this ship. I'm not going to make it short range. I mean, this is what I could do. I could make it short range. No, I'm going to make it medium range. It's going to go with my battle cruisers. That's right. So this will be my battle sh my battle cruiser complement. How much do I need to get this back to normal? Wow, a lot. That was the only other thing I was considering doing, but that's not possible. I'd have to probably what we'd have to lose a speed a knot, I think. Yeah, a knot would do it. 
actually, if I sacrifice one knot, I can get this down to 1400. Let me compare the two costs. This is 5.1 million total. So this is like 367,000 per month versus 367 versus 412. I mean, that's a pretty big change in cost for one knot. Wait, uh, so this is 5.7, the other one was what, 6.1? Or sorry, 5.1? Gosh, it's really, really tough to say. They both seem like good options. Because this isn't quite the end game model, right? We There's one reason why it's not, because it doesn't have the quadruple um, torpedo mounts. Although I think I've experimented with it and it doesn't matter the weight per mount is basically a fixed amount per tube. So we can see here, it's 18 weight tons per tube. And I think that that translates just as well to the quadruple mounts. Huh. We can get more of them. I think more is more effective even if they lose that one knot. I don't really have any battlefield knowledge of what one knot difference how that what that actually changes so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna make the decision um, if you disagree feel free to leave it in the comments I, I'm actually compl I'm like I, I don't know which one to do I think they're about equivalent but the money savings being able to get two more destroyers out of like 10 I feel like that bonus is gonna be better because then even if we lose one of our destroyers and route which is probably more likely to happen regardless of the speed, like 35 knots, I don't think that saves you a destroyer. Um, usually the destroyers get hit and their maximum speed is lowered anyway. So I think having one extra safety destroyer in your um, torpedo assault is probably better than having one less but having them all be a little faster. So there it is, we will build the Bravi, get her underway, and then let me see how much I have left plenty actually which is good um we can get five to start sure so there it is a new destroyer we do have our battle cruisers starting to come in all right now i know we've been trying to avoid avoid war with france and only one of our battle cruisers is operational, but this is probably the best time for our battle uh, for a battle with France because we have short range dreadnoughts that can't leave Northern Europe anyway. So this is the best time for them to fight. And they shouldn't be outclassed by anything just because that naval that navy treaty basically made these things the same as any other ship. So I'm gonna do this. It might lead to war with France. I think it did. There it is. Okay, so we are now at war with France, but mind you, Great Britain is also. We've we've sucked them in. World war is inevitable. All right, so here we go. And actually, we get a little budget kick up for that. Unfortunately, we don't have the money to build our new dreadnought, but it's certainly the next thing that we're going to be able to do. And that's interesting. They're declining action surprising oh good look at this the mal 39 she just barely finished working up i think her crew, crew quality oh it's zero well it's not negative one that's good so that means it should be good crew quality what do we have in store for us here we have a flora class which is slow as balls Yep, two floor classes. Well, that's fine. They don't know any better. They couldn't get out of the way. Alright, wind to the north. Battle cruisers, which are infinitely faster than my floor class scouts. How do we deal with this? I think... I'm gonna head south. Encourage... No, we don't even have to encourage to be launching because nothing can happen.
We want to draw these guys down. The Prote class. Hmm. This is interesting. We are faster. This is exactly why I love these battle cruisers. We are faster than this light cruiser. So we really should be able to afford we um, be able to engage whenever we want. Is our max speed 28 or 29? 28, okay. So we'll go to 27, which is their maximum speed, I think. Hopefully they just get sucked into a little turn here. They did. Something. Uh, they're turning away again. We will catch them eventually. I'm sure that this there is um, a fleet, a French fleet, on the other side of this scout, but... Time for us to also go up to squad max. I forgot about doing that with these guys. Now, they have coal, so actually... <laughs> They won't be able to stay in the fight as long anyway. I might as well just get them out of here. They're almost totally useless. We have 5 inch guns. Um, oh, that's our 11 inch guns. But we have, oh, we have 6 inch guns on this. 9 on each side. Yes, there are specific ammo. That's good. Somebody mentioned that there is ammo. So that is true. Okay. Wow, we hit him already with an 11 inch gun. Ouch. And these are what, quality zero 11 inch guns? Yes, okay. So we might as well just, oh my gosh, we hit him again. We might as well just head right at him. Because five of our 11 inch guns is, seems to be sufficient already. <laughs> we can get the um, light cruisers to finish, wow, another hit. I love these battle cruisers. I really love them. Director firing, right? Yep. Another hit. 11 inch hits on the light cruiser is just painful. Very painful. I remember I originally thought the mines were actually in the tactical battle. They're only in the strategic. They just can sink a ship. But four submerged torpedo launchers means that Probably they won't be able to really do any serious torpedo launching against us. Okay, now we want to stay north of them. So I'm going to send these light cruisers just to hound them in case they break off. And there it is. So this is the real action here. They are heading away. I wonder why that is. So what do we have here? We haven't even gone to max speed yet. Only light damage. I'm really surprised. We've gotten these 11 inch just massive blasts. But what do we have here? There are battle cruisers. So hopefully with the small advantage our light cruiser our I mean our battle cruisers have given them, they will be able to successfully engage this light cruiser. Although I'm very interested in what's going on here. We're about to find out. Yeah, well, I have, it's two to one, so I'm, I'm just looking, there's no way we can lose this, right? <laughs> there is a way we can lose it, but these guys have given, we, we got 11 inch hits on this guy already, he should be seriously damaged. All right, here we go. Six 11 inch guns, wow. So this is the antithesis of what we did. This is essentially, they went for kind of the, um, German battle cruiser design here to lessen the armament to keep up the armor. Their turrets are low though, and I think we have flash fire turrets. Yeah, not reduced, which is good. I like against the British it's you know reasonable to decrease them, but 
Wow, that was a fantastic... Good job, Mal39. That was great. Immediate hits. It is 11 inches versus 11 inches, so are we penetrating from this range? That's a good question. Okay, the range is 17,400. I don't even know what... We'd probably be going deck, hitting on deck for that. Otherwise, we won't be penetrating their armor. Well, the Mal 39's on fire. I mean, not literally on fire, but she's honed in quite well on this French battlecruiser. Who still hasn't engaged. If I'm not mistaken, we are engaging, they aren't. They must have quality negative one 11 inch guns. Now they've opened fired. So yeah, they, it seems like their range is significant. Oh, they don't have increased elevation. That could also explain it. Launch torpedoes if you want, just because hopefully that'll get them to change their course. All right, here we go. So, they hit our turret. That's a good place for them to hit us. <laughs> our turrets are very well defended. We finally managed to land a hit on this ship. And then we landed two more hits on their other battlecruisers. Another two hits. You'd imagine that some of this has to be penetrating. Another hit. Let's go squad max just so we can try to eke out. They're going to try to come over the top of us. I want to come over the top of them. Oh boy. All right, so let's turn a little bit harder against this guy. But the battle going on up here, the one that really matters, is going well. Okay, finally they've returned fire and done something. A near mix and a superstructure hit. Good thing our conning tower has pretty good defense. It did penetrate, though. Okay, lots more hits. This is a good turn for us. The French fleet, originally, if you remember in our first war, they kind of... I was very disappointed by the Russian fleet performance, let's just say that. And now I'm really happy with how things have gone at the start of this. Okay, wow. So these guys have not all or nothing or all or nothing. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure they actually have all or nothing. Yeah, they do. Which means that yes, of course, belt extended will be penetrated because we don't have any armor there. That is cool to see though. That is really cool to see. The Kinburn firing. So we have neutralized one of their turrets, that's good. This one is still doing well. Six 11 inch guns, so we should come out on top, despite that armor advantage they have. I mean, a penetration is a penetration. So we just have to hope that we're close enough now that we'll penetrate, number one. We have two submerged mounts, so we have to be a little bit careful about that. Uh, and we are using equal size shells, equal caliber shells, number two, so that if, since we have more guns firing, I think we should have a better overall penetration, number of penetrations. They had two, that's not good, but we had two as well. It's a story of two wars going on here. Can these pathetic floor classes somehow take out an already damaged light cruiser? Is it slowing down? Nope, still 20. But the real battle, of course, the one that matters, is up here. These are at 20,100. How is that possible? That must be misinf misinformation. This is not a treaty ship. They could not have built a 20,000 ton ship. Just could not. But we are landing the hits now. Are these happening on both or the same? Good, they're happening on both of them. Oh yes, this is good. Let's angle a little bit more towards. 
Oh, it looks like this one has gone dead in the water. So we'll cut across and split the difference. There it is, more hits. Just want to get this guy, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit closer. I think he just lost his engine for a second there. How are we doing here? Rudder damage on the amethyst, oh great. But we did manage to get two hits off before that happened. Interesting, those hits are on the wrong guy, surprisingly. Another belt hit, which we, oh, that's because they're using their medium guns. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right, this guy's looping back, so we can kind of come over the top now. <coughs> and they are not even firing their guns at us. We are getting such good penetrations, I don't want to move us. This is great. We've destroyed their rear turret, that's great. How are things going down here? Yeah, we can't turn. But they are not firing. I'm not seeing any fire coming from them. Okay. Looks like they might be disengaging here. Oh boy. Our top speed is 23? No. Keep going 26 at least. Now we have the wind advantage. This guy is going very slow. We must have hit his engine. <laughs> These guys just can't change course. That's all right. They did really good damage to that guy, so we can come back for him. More importantly, let's get this Tourville. Okay, there's the full broadside going. Still just landing minor hits, but is he on fire? No, just heavy damage. I mean, just heavy damage. That's fantastic. Yeah. Surely she's sinking now. Oh my gosh. They've both come to a stop. <laughs> and here's the amethyst. Uh, sorry. Amitz, it's... I was reading the word wrong entirely. Sorry about that. Amitz, it's... I don't know how to pronounce that, obviously. But they are headed right on a collision course with this <laughs> battlecruiser. What an unfortunate circumstance. <laughs> Now, I said let's launch torpedoes, so hopefully we can get close enough to do that. Oh, rudder repaired. Good. Go after the other one. Okay, there's the torpedo launch. Swing. That should be a hit. Good. Now, let's just hold torpedo fire for a second. They are going after this guy, good. But we want this one. We know that one's gonna go down. We are greedy, we are very greedy. Ooh. All right, we started to hit them again, that's good. We're back in range. We don't have any torpedoes with these guys, so this has to be purely by gunfire. Um, you may now launch torpedoes again. And we did. That was very quick. I don't know how... Uh, they must have thought they were still moving, but now this, in fact, is dead stop. So let's try to get our port side torpedoes. Okay, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Flash fire, that's also fine. It was over anyway. Let's go down and finish this guy off. Okay, good. So we can run this at fast speed now. We know exactly what's going to happen. We'll let that guy go to AI control. I don't care. Yeah, go ahead and gain me some extra points. There it is. So a fantastic first engagement for the Russians. 
Our new battle cru battle cruisers are phenomenal. Very good performance. I just can't believe that this is true. I mean, these are obviously pre-treaty battle cruisers. They're actually that old. They do have quality negative 111 inch guns. That I think that was one of the reasons why we were doing so well. And I don't think they have gun elevation either. So their max range is 16.6. Our max range is 18.5, big difference. Okay, well, that is gonna conclude this episode. So we're at war with the frogs. And we are off to a very, very good start as well. So I think I'll just call this the first BC. So that's our first battle cruiser, uh, really our first anything but a battleship um, engagement of the, our career. So the Russians have done well with their battle cruisers. And that's with only two of them out. We know that the rest will be coming very soon. And we are actually going to have the budget very soon to build the dreadnoughts that I was talking about. For now, I think what we're going to do is probably just build some extra destroyers, but I'll figure that all out in the next episode. So thanks for watching, and until the next one, take care.